And the last thing, it's not even real VR. I think some have seen this before. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, okay. Ah. Good, we don't have tone perfect, so I can talk. So uh, that's our cardboard, and we're developing with them kind of like a room scale. You have like the point codes everywhere, and you have two controllers which you can click, but uh, that was one per. I don't know, I actually wanted to show it here, but it's still, I think it doesn't work enough, good. <laughs> and of course, that's the biggest problem, of course, it depends on lightning and lighting and everywhere. Um, but phones get better, hopefully, Google Tango comes in as well. But this one works basically if you have good lighting, it works directly. Yeah. So that, that's very much, I guess, the future, right? I mean, the, either the big VR stuff goes smaller or the phones get better, but it will be mobile anyway. Anyway. So. Real mobile is on the way. So, when you see this sentence or hear it sometimes from somebody, then you know what is behind every word. You can think about it, uh, what, what, what potential is there, and think about some business ideas or, or anything. And I'm, I'm happy if somebody calls me brainstorm me. I really like this kind of stuff, because then when companies call me, I can connect and see what I can help. Yes. Thank you. You can download the slides if you want. Yeah, good question, right? I think it's currently, it's not stereoscopic. I don't know if they put in an algorithm to, to calculate that. Currently, I think it's not. Yeah. Or maybe it is, uh, the camera is maybe fit in normal, but all the augmented objects, I think, I think they are 3D, otherwise you cannot get the best perception. Yeah, next, next question. Here. Um, for how long do you think your business model will continue to work? Because at some point, everybody probably have a VR headset and then at some point giving it away for free. Yes, so I had this fear already in mid of 2015. Because I know cardboard is not sustainable. In the end, everybody has one or the trend doesn't continue or the hype is over. So by, by mid of 2015, I already started to make like cardboard plus business ideas like uh, to sell, if you have a concert which is totally physically sold out, so you sell stream with, with your own QR code or which we did with Ghostbusters, you buy the cardboard, the DVD is inside, and you have additional content which you have like also with the code related. But 2050 was way too early for us <coughs> because nobody had any understanding about this. So uh, my next expectation would be I think 2017 is still still a good year for cardboard, and then it will go down, but it will never go away because cardboard I think uh, are still required. But, but where do you see yourself now? Because on the Cayman Islands. Yeah, but, <laughs> 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 but, but you want to, to replace your business model with um, all these ideas for uh, marketing and uh, business. If somebody has a really good team and a good idea, I'm happy to uh, put all my efforts in there. Currently, I'm totally eaten up by, by this business. I'm only doing that and I do this like 24-7. Uh, I don't know if this continue or how it will be 2018, but I'm happy if there's somebody has a good idea or anything to, to go in there. Next question. Otherwise, later you can, I think I, no. If somebody, no. If somebody wants to uh, talk to me later, I'm the guy with the t-shirt in here, maybe the only one feeling quite cold. And of course, if you don't have a Christmas gift or you want to have a nice cardboard, you can buy ours. <laughs> <laughs> They're very comfortable. Uh, currently, good question, 1290, I think I, I reduced it for, for Christmas. Good. Uh, one quick question. Yeah. I, I think you have a very beautiful design. You also make some innovations like this. This one on the side and the mustache and so on. Okay. Uh, but how do you, do you see your cardboard compared to the, the, the cheap, the real cheap brown cardboard? Yeah. Why do you go to 
way for a pretty low fee. Yeah. So there are advantages and disadvantages. We don't have the button, for example. We have a cut out for the thumb. The button, for example, tends to, deal, uh, to, to always tip then against the phone. That's one issue. Um, it, it's, it's a really a question of your guide. If you want to have bigger lenses, smaller lenses, we have smaller lenses because they, are, uh, they work better with, with the eyes. And they are made in Germany, so the, you can actually make it wet, you can clean it, even though it's printed, it doesn't uh, have any problem. The foam makes it nice, really nice fit on the, on the nose. I mean, it's up to you to decide for yourself. I mean, that's a, that's a premium cardboard, we are in this segment. Okay, so. Thank you again. So I'm now hand her over the mic because I can see you. Yeah, you are my technician here. Hi. Uh, my name is Stefan Schindler. Hi, everybody. Thank you for, thanks for coming. And uh, Philip, thanks for inviting. I'm from Wonderland Industries and from Metropolis VR. But uh, today I'm here for the virtual reality Verein Berlin Brandenburg. Um, and on the gadget side, I brought you Daydream. If anyone wants to, to check out uh, the, the Google Daydream, you know, you can come to you later. Who of you knows the uh, Virtual Reality Association in Berlin Brandenburg? Oh, all right, all right. Okay. Who knows VRNowCon? Who went there? All right, very good. So many of you will ask, you know, why why do we need a Verein? Why do we need this type of association, this typical German? Uh, thing when we have meetups like this, which, which, are, which are great and, and a ton of people, and we have lots of other sort of VR um, conglomerates, associations, and so forth. And um, I'm here to tell you why why it makes sense to have this association, why it may make sense for you to, to join it or at least uh, know about it, and um, uh, what we do. I came to this region three years ago, well, two and a half years ago from Munich um, and uh, joined uh, this startup company called Wonderland Industries, for which I'm working now, who have their offices in the studio complex in Babelsberg, Studio Babelsberg. And I've been working a lot in other studio complexes on the, on the West Coast, and, and I was quite excited to move to Babelsberg. And um, when I came there, I was pretty disappointed because there's not a whole lot of business going on. It's not very lively. It's, it's actually, after five o'clock, it's, it's pretty bad. So <laughs> what a wasted opportunity, I thought. You know, we have this, this massive brand. We have the, the, all of these uh, production companies around, and we have Berlin right next to us. What can we do to sort of um, build a more sustainable business and, and a, a more lively community for the media industry there? And I was joined by a couple of other, other people who felt the same way. And uh, we talked to the local ministry of economics. And um, they're super disappointed as well. And um, uh, would like to do something to, to re revive this place and especially revive the media industry there and establish a media business that is more sustainable than the media business that is today living exclusively on subsidies, on film or whatever. Uh, if you have good subsidies, then everything is good, but if England or Hungary or any other country has better subsidies, then it's, then it's bad. And so we said um, that virtual reality and all the associated technologies with it, 360 degree video, um, augmented reality, mixed reality, and you, know, you name it, all the things that we cover today under this umbrella that we call VR. Um, it's actually a very interesting technology. This is a lot more than uh, technology. It's, it's, an, it's a new computing platform. And it's technology that goes far beyond entertainment. I mean, what we just saw it was a very good example. And it has to do with media, and it has to do with, with media technology, but it goes far beyond just entertainment. So it brings a big opportunity to lots of people working in the media space, storytellers, content people, as well as technology people, to establish businesses that live from 
other customers than just entertainment customers. And typically, these are customers who pay real money for the value that they get. You know, it's, it's a totally different business model from, from entertainment, where you are really dependent on subsidies. So uh, the, the Ministry of Brandenburg, but also the Senate of Berlin, are very interested in doing something to uh, sort of develop that type of business in the region. Because they believe, and we believe, that um, VR is so new that there is no global sort of uh, mega player yet. Even though we think uh, China has gone years away from us, and even though we think the, the, the big guys in, uh, on the West Coast and maybe some on the uh, New York East Coast will be dominating the market, I don't think so. I think we're still on square one for many of these um, elements. And this region does have a great opportunity to establish itself on the international market to be a big player. But what we have to, uh, 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 the, the mistake that we have to make sure we do not do again, as has been done many times in the media industry here, is to have a lot of individual players that, that play it by themselves. Then I don't think this will, this will really work for the region. And this is why this association was founded, because we believe if we are able to, um, to, to form new work, ways of collaboration, to form new conglomerates, um, we can achieve a lot more. And public <coughs> money is available to support that. But public money will not go to individual companies in this case. And, and we founded this association to make sure that we can collect, we can acquire public money to foster that companies like yours, s startups, but to foster mainly the cooperation between uh, companies to establish virtual reality business in the region. And um, uh, uh, those of you who went to VR now, and we'll show the video in a second, um, have seen sort of the first incarnation of it. It was an event that was extremely successful. There was almost 500 people there. Um, we had speakers from all over the place. 33, we um, awarded the, the VR award, and all of that cost a lot of money. You know, your entry fees have not, not paid uh, for that. And that is money that we got from the local government. Um, you can only do that if you have a legal entity like Satan Association uh, to do these things. And our, our real goal is to, uh, in fact, establish what we call a VR innovation hub. In fact, both in Berlin and in Potsdam, which uh, should be a physical building like this, which houses um, co-working spaces, which houses also rooms for investors who can put their own incubators in there, which very importantly will have technology to be used by startups and by established companies to build new virtual reality products um, or business models. Because we all know that the technology we're using, like 360 cameras, you know, the innovation cycle is so fast that it's super difficult for startups to constantly be on the edge of a technology, to constantly have the, the uh, uh, most up-to-date um, head-mounted displays, to have the most up-to-date 360 camera, to have the most up-to-date motion capture system. We want to make these technologies available to people at lower cost and on demand only, so you don't have to invest in it. And not only that production technology, but also IT uh, technology, like you know, render farms or uh, GPU clusters, whatever. You make it available ad hoc and on demand and at, uh, at a low cost. And for that, you need public money. And that's what the association is doing, to acquire that money to work uh, with the local authorities and um, establish that. So uh, that's my basic pitch. I would like to show you the video from uh, the VR Now Con, and um, then I'm open for questions here and the other but also I'm, I'm available to talk to you. Can you stand up? Should we here? Oh, if you don't have audio, then it probably doesn't go out.
2016 is the year of the VR. And today, we have the opportunity about this recent developments at VR now come Germany first stand alone to create a platform for the local and the global players. I'm proud to be here with you at the first Potsdam-based conference on virtual reality. I'm absolutely delighted to be part of VR now. I've spent pretty much two decades designing the future of technology. Now the technology is far enough advanced that we can talk about where we are right now instead of just projecting into the future. The VR Now conference, so there's so many familiar faces from the VR scene. Um, it's so great to meet the people. It's very international and um, yeah, they made a great selection of speakers. Hey, how's it going? I'm James Jensen. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer of The Void, and I'm completely excited and stoked to be here to see new content creators out here. And, you know, a message out to everybody is we are creating a new platform for hyper-reality experiences that is completely untethered and fully immersive. We are now on, and it's the start of a very great industry. I'm, I'm just telling you, all of you out there, be at the forefront, be the players, be the developers, make the build the language for VR out there. This is your chance, and next year, I want to see you at VR now. On. will be able to do. Uh, and, and of course, these are things that all of you can benefit from. And I strongly believe that uh, we need these, these, these two things happening. We need the meetups, like the one we have here, and we need these more official, more formal institutions that are able to collect public money for the, 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 the bigger goal of the, um, uh, the country and the authorities to establish business and to, to grow and subsidize uh, businesses. And, and, and one of these elements are conferences like this, are awards that um, uh, help build a community, but moreover give you a platform to uh, display yourself and also to promote the entire region. The next uh, next We Are Now uh, conference event will happen here in Bernal, here in, in Berlin in cooperation with Bernal and the European Film Market on February 13th. It is the business element. We call it the We Are Now Home Business Mixer. So it won't be as big as the We Are Now Home you saw just here, but uh, it will be significant. But it will focus on attracting uh, large corporations, attracting sort of decision makers of larger companies, and not only entertainment companies, but all kinds of industries, to bring them here, bring them to the region, and show them uh, that in this region they will find everything they need for whatever virtual reality project or idea they have. Um, yeah. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a member, it's, uh, there's two, two types of uh, membership. One is a, a full membership, it's 80 euros a month, and um, uh, supporting membership is 10 euros uh, a month, which certain um, benefits for events and uh, other things. But it's not, I'm not here to, to sort of uh, generate more members. Of course, we, we need members and we need members, but the audience that, that is here, I would like you to go away with the fact that you know that there is this association and it, it makes total sense for you to sort of uh, follow it and, and use it um, uh, in case you are a startup, in case you have uh, some, some business that you want to establish in this, uh, in this area. So thank you very much for uh, listening. Do you have questions now? Why does Berlin? Um, uh, if, if we as a region want to play in the international game, then uh, we need 
we need a form to cluster ourselves. I don't think we, we have a we have a number of very large companies in the VFX space or in, in other industries who can probably play a big role themselves. But I think they could play a much bigger role and a much more important role if they would um, have a platform that makes it easy for them to collaborate with, with uh, other firms. And one of the reasons for that is that I believe the business models for virtual reality are not yet set. And I don't think there is anyone who sort of has a very clear idea of how we make money in virtual reality today. We'll have a talk about location-based um, entertainment in, right after you, which I believe is probably one of the, the uh, early areas to, to make uh, money in, in VR. But in general, it's such a new medium, it's such a new um, format that you probably need new ways of collaboration with totally different entities. Uh, and that's why Berlin, as any other, uh, as any other region, uh, would need such a new system. <coughs> you don't look as if I answered your question. No, I do agree with you, actually, and we don't want to do that. You know, this is why I say, I think there is, uh, we need to have meetups like this who are totally different organized, but we also need to have these more formal associations, for example, in order to acquire the public money that's available. And otherwise, we just, we wouldn't get it. We are now calling, is, is a good example. This thing costs 250,000 euros. It's a one day event. The event makes total sense for a lot of people. In fact, I would say for almost everybody who went there, it made sense to be there, to spend that time. Yeah. But it, 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 it wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have been able to acquire that money. So the, the idea is to share this public, uh, the public money to Caritas, and if so, uh, what, how are you going to be priority to Caritas, like uh, entertainment, or just be yeah, that, that's one of the questions we still have to figure out, obviously. But so this example that I, that I just uh, told you about, we are now come, that was easy. You, know, you can, you can uh, go there, people who are part of the association get a discount, um, can uh, display um, there. We, we do corporations with the Augmented World Expo, for example, where members of the association could um, could display their, their technology, their product, their company for free. These are things, but um, the, uh, the innovation um, center, the, the, the VR hub that, that we're planning, for example, um, uh, will be open to everybody, right? But it's, it's uh, we, we need the association to get uh, funding from the public. So we won't get all the money we need for that, but for example, in this particular case, there is a, a funding mechanism available. It's about seven and a half million euros. It's a 50% funding. We need to find another seven and a half million from the private market. That won't happen by itself. We need someone whose job it is to find these other seven and a half million um, euros. Now, this is not something that someone will do on the side or you know, in, in his spare time. So we need to pay someone for that. That's a guy that we will employ in the association. Now for that, again, we need money. Um, we just received 200,000 euros from the government in Brandenburg to hire this particular person, you know, whose job it is to, to uh, see if we can acquire um, the, the other half of the funding that we need for such an innovation. Hub. 